The Yakuza Slash Like a Dragon series has some of not only video games, but the world's greatest composers. It's just a shame that, like, no one knows who the hell they are. Over a year ago now, I, out of pure curiosity, started to look into two composers, Zenter and Hyde Lunch, because I had noticed their names show up on a handful of songs I liked on the Sega Sound Team Spotify. After looking them up and doing a bit of research, I was fascinated to find out what these two composers had done, and so I thought it'd be interesting to make a video on the two of them. This then evolved into several other videos about other composers, but also an enlightening experience for myself to finally be able to put names behind some of these songs I've come to know and love. Now, before we get too deep into anything, I'm just going to give an introduction to some of the composers that I've previously mentioned in a video or have made specific videos on. Based on my research and my own assumptions, I can tell you that as of this video, there are currently five composers who, I believe, work at Sacred Self and act as the main composers for the games. These are Hidenori Shoji, Sara Yoshida, Yuri Fugita, Chihiro Aoki, and, as of Lost Judgment, Satoshi Okamura. Previously, there was also Mitsuharu Fukuyama, who composed iconic songs like Bakumi Tai, and was the musical director of Yakuza 5. But after Yakuza 5, he sadly stopped creating for the series. Anyway, there's also the composers who don't work at Sega specifically, again this is just from what I gather so I could be wrong, that will always seem to find themselves composing for the games. These are people like Zenter and Hyde Lunch who I mentioned earlier and 83 Key. Then finally there are various guest composers as I call them who might make a couple of songs for some games or only work on one game with some notable people like Hideki Naganuma, famous for Jet Set Radio and that one song from Lethal League Blaze, or Keisuke Ito and other composers from the same little team as him who created the Pokemon Mystery Dungeon soundtracks. With that out of the way I shall now go into more detail about about specific composers and just gush over how good some of these songs are. I'll start off with the most well-known composer who typically gets all of the credit for like all of the songs, being Hidenori Shoji. He's been around ever since the very first game, acting as that game's main composer, and has worked on all but a couple of the games, composing a large number of the songs, and acting as the music director for most of the games as well. Most often you'll find that Shoji will do the main battle theme, or themes, as well as the final boss theme, but then also will do various other little songs, but again, this is typically what he does, not always what he does. Ever since the first game, his style of music has remained the same, so if you listen to some of the old music he did and compare it to some of his newer stuff, you can definitely still feel the classic sounds of the Yakuza music in it, and while saying he has evolve too much sounds like a criticism, it 100% isn't, because when Shoji departs from his typical feel is when he goes from some of his early songs like this, to crazy shit like this. While he does get an incorrect amount of praise as he tends to be incorrectly credited by people online for songs he didn't do, it should be noted that praising this man is something you could definitely turn into a religion and everyone will come completely understand. He created that yuck as a feeling and still to this day he's absolutely kicking ass with every song he does. Then on the opposite end of the spectrum we have the newest member of the team, Satoshi Okamura. Somehow he's managed to capture that feel of the yuck as a series immediately, so much so that I thought a lot of the songs he had made for Lost Judgment were reused from Judgment because they just fit so well. He did songs like the Armon theme in Lost Judgment as well as random stuff like this. Now obviously there's only been one game in the series since Lost Judgment being, well, Lost Judgment. So it is kind of hard to determine whether or not he really is a mainstay, but to add more evidence to my claim, he was a composer for another recent RGG Studio game, being an entry in their Super Monkey Ball series. And then he's also in the same place as the other main composers, as well as these two guys here, who used to do a fair bit of work for the games and did make a return for Lost Judgment. But anyway, I'm saying we should expect to see his name in future entries. Then there are the two lads I made my first two composer videos on, being Zenter and Hyde Lunch, or Hid Lunch. Or is it he'd lunch? He'd lunch. I I'm still don't know. Anyway, Zenter is a cool guy who commented on my video of him saying thank you. I'm still chuffed about this, by the way. And he likes to do a lot of work for the Yakuza series. Then there's Hyde Lunch, who I believe was previously two people, as now these days it's just a guy named Yasuyuki Matsuzaki. They both actually started working for the series around the same time, and ever since have done a lot of battle themes, cutscene themes, or minigame themes. The two of these lads don't seem to be official Sega people, or as far as I'm aware, that's at least the case for Zenta, as he has his own studio doing a lot of his own work, as well as helping produce music for other artists. They both love their rock, but where the two differ are the things I love about them. Zenta really focuses on using guitars in his songs, and it's usually one of the defining features of what he does. Then there's Hyde Lunch, who these days a lot of the cutscene music, especially in the two judgments, where his defining feature is how focused he is on the drums and bass of each song. To show you their two styles, here are some of their songs, one after the other.
Up next we have two from the main cast who I feel provide very similar contributions to the soundtracks. Yuri Fukuda and Sara Yoshida both tend to dip in and out of either fun music you can dance to, to music that will make your heart cry. I don't really have anything else to say about them, though the music can't, so uh, let me just show you this contrast that I'm talking about. Up next then is my personal favourite composer of them all. 83 key. I'm very aware that a style of music isn't for everyone and by no means is my saying that he is the best, but whether it's an arrangement or a composition, he was responsible for creating some of my favourite songs from the entire series. When I first started looking at his discography, I was pleased to find out some of the stuff he had done. But what I'm most pleased to find out was his work on the two most recent games. He started with some mini-game themes such as the chicken racing theme in Ishin or the Messi King battle theme in Kiwami 1, but then he started to show what he was really capable of in judgement with songs like these. I was pleased to find out after some digging and long before the official soundtrack release that he composed Mabuchi's theme Warmaker or the Gummy Jewel encounter theme Answer from Gummy Jewel. Then, when I played Yakuza Like a Dragon and I heard Majima's theme in that game, I just immediately fell in love with it and very quickly became my favourite song from the series. It's an arrangement of a song from the original game by Hidenori Shoji and somehow the song went from this... ...to this... And if you haven't guessed, yes, 83 Key is responsible for this version of the song. So yeah, I very easily fell in love with this guy's music. <coughs> then... When I first heard this song, I was just completely blown away. It's an arrangement of Chihiro Aoki's Unwavering Belief from Lost Judgment, and it's not just my favourite song from the franchise, but to be honest, it's, as of this point in my life, my favourite song full stop. Although, the final boss theme from Pokemon Scarlet and Violet is actually kind of... The other songs he did for Lost Judgment I also love, like Fog or Toward to the Skyline, but Digging Your Heels is just so... Oh, it's just so good. But then there's one more person in the main cast who I mentioned just before and at the start of the video. This person, this one single person, is not just the best composer that the Yakuza series has in stock, but I personally believe them to be one of the most talented composers to ever exist. I'm of course referring to Chihiro Aoki. Now there are some incredible composers out there like Nobuo Uematsu, Yoko Shimomura, Ace Plus, Toby Fox, Junichi Masuda and so on, but a lot of them, they aren't like Miss Aoki here. And that's because she can do literally whatever she wants and it works every time. When I did my video on her I realised that I really enjoyed a lot of the songs she made and I was surprised to find out that she was the music director for Ishin and Yakuza 6, which is a role typically reserved for Hidenori Shoji. But back then I didn't really see her talent like I do today. Don't really know how she does it but she manages to create anything she wants and every time it's a masterpiece. Whether the song she makes is for a final boss or for a sub story about someone dropping the sandwich at a 7-Eleven or some bullshit, she will put the same amount of effort into each of them which is really what the because the soundtracks are all about.
There's so much variety and care to each of these songs and what Chihiro Aoki provides is no different. If I had to guess what it's like whenever RGG Studio are creating a new game, I'd say it would go a bit like this. Hello Aoki-san. Fat New Music Do You Have For Judge Eyes 2? Well it is not much. I only have a few songs. Do But it's not just her own music that she's done because some of the arrangements that she did too are just phenomenal. The final boss theme from Yakuza 2, A Scattered Moment, which was composed by Hidenori Shoji, was a beautiful and very emotional song. Then the Kiwami 2 version, being A Scattered Eternal Moment, was rearranged by Aoki, which we only know because of a small soundtrack release for some Kiwami 2 songs, so there was never an official release of the full thing, sadly. Her version, it's just like, how? Yeah. How can someone do something like this? I know people are going to say, oh, well, the PS2 version's better, and whatever, but to that I say it's called Kiwami for a goddamn reason. And mate, this shit is bloody Kiwami. Like I said before, she can really do anything she damn well wants, and in all honesty, her talents are so varied that without looking things up, it's actually really hard to tell what song she's composed. I mean, for example, after you have a listen to a bunch or all of the songs of a specific composer, you can start to listen to other songs by them and realize, ah uh, yes, that's a Zenta song, I can tell by the guitar. I even have some guesses of my own of songs that never got an official credit, which are probably wrong, but again, they're just guesses, so leave me alone, you big bully. First of all, there's a song that plays in the non-Japanese version of Yakuza 5 when you fight Daigo, which I believe to have been composed by Mitsuhiro Fukuyama, and the reason for that is that a lot of his songs have these really powerful choruses that kind of feel like they would play during a triumphant moment in a movie or something. Then there's a theme that plays when you fight the mystical boss of the Kaito Files, which I believe to have been done by Hyde Lunch because of the general feel of the song, because of the fact that he confirmed he did stuff for the DLC, and also because of a specific, uh, noise, I guess, that was also in Hyena's Wheezing from Judgment, which is actually confirmed to have been done by him. Speaking of noises, despite how capable she is to create anything, I believe that this set of long battle themes from Kiwami 2 was done by Chihiro Aoki. What makes me think that is because of a term that I have coined, and when I say that I mean I just think it to myself. But anyway, it's the Chihiro Aoki noise that gives it away. That being this. Now why do I bring this up? Well, it's because I wanted to briefly show some songs from a completely random game, that being a Japanese mobile game called Shimigame Tensei DX2 Deliberation, or D2, I, I don't know. The songs for this game were unlike the rest of the SMT series, and that's because they were composed by our friends, Sari Yoshida, Yuri Fukuda, and Chihiro Aoki. While it sounds like an insult, you can definitely hear the similarities between the songs they did for this and the songs that they've done for Yakuza. However, I think it just goes to show that it isn't the games themselves that provide a definition to these songs, but the other way around. These composers are the ones that have created the as a feel, and I'm sure all of our ears are grateful for it. But besides all that, I really like some of these songs from the game, so I thought I'd put them over some Yakuza stuff with similar sounding songs originally, so uh, yeah, have this.
beyond our main cast, we have so many other composers that come in and fulfill their roles so perfectly. Some of the best songs from the entire series have been done by composers who rocked up, did one thing, then buggered off for all of eternity. There's someone like Mitsuhara Fukuyama, who used to be one of their head musical honchos, but after Yakuza 5, he stopped working for the games. Before he left, though, he did drop the actual most recognizable song from the franchise, being Bucky Me Tai, so we're all, of course, very grateful to him for what he's done. Then you have the people who did, like, most of the Yakuza 2 soundtrack, doing just that game and a couple of karaoke songs for Yakuza 3, then almost nothing else, or Ryohei Kono, who's only ever done two songs, one of which being actually one of my favorite songs from Mission. Or there's Jin Senbon Matsu dropping one of the most incredible songs of all time, then promptly buggering off, and hell, even the spin offs get the same level of love with Hideki Naganuma blessing everyone's ears with some intense funk, then once again promptly funking off. I know this is a bit random, but I've always felt that the opinion one can have on a song can change depending on the situation one finds themselves in while listening to said song. More or less. I bring this up because I've always felt that you could have one of the most brilliant bosses in the history of video games, but with the worst song ever, and for many people that song will forever live on in their hearts because of how much impact the fight had on them. Then there's the opposite, where you might get the magnum opus of shit in the form of a terrible boss fight, but might have the magnum opus of good shit for the song, and yet you may forget the song immediately as the boss stays into your memory for all of eternity. I bring that up because of how much the songs of these games can really improve the battles and whatnot. The opposite case definitely exists, like how not many people really care for the wicked from Kiwami 1 because of this twat or fly being so iconic because the boss fight it plays in is such a stark contrast to the rest of the game but also because it's a good song. Can you imagine though if the games had a different style to their music? If maybe the current team of composers were all thrown out the window and the lead dudes wanted a more atmospheric soundtrack like something along the lines of God of War for example? It wouldn't be bad, but it just wouldn't be the same. What the composers do right is definitely setting a mood, but in all honesty the mood that it sets isn't one of a serious crime thriller about the underbelly of Japan, nor is it a silly wacky game about some schizophrenic dude and his mates. No, 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 no. no. It's about tensing your muscles and punching people! These composers, no matter how few or how many songs they've composed for these games, they make us all want to dance, they make us all want to cry, they make us all just want to bloody beat the shit out of people, but they also make us want to flood our Spotify playlists with a shitload of their music. The Yakuza Slash Like a Dragon series has a soundtrack that is just so unique to it. Even those that come close to it, like the Tekken series, don't get across that same feeling. The songs are varied, they're fun, they're sad, they're all you want to hear when you're doing the things you do in Yakuza. And you know what? It really just makes me want to say one thing. Why didn't fucking Xenoblade 3 get soundtrack of the year? What kind of bullshit is that? <laughs> 